Hey, y'all know what it is. This is Tommy Stars. This is Tommy's Talking. MySpace.com backslash I hate Tommy Stars. And I'm on NewFreeMixtape.com. Blinging with the rubber bands on. Because you know what I mean? We always gotta keep the rubber bands on and everything. And Inville is a full effect on this motherfucker. Hey, hey, this is Tommy Stars. Ow! Alright, what's going on? It's Maul J. And on behalf of New Free Mixtape, I mean, we've got Tommy Stars. I mean, what's going hey, on, man? Hey, what's poppin'? What's poppin'? I'm still getting killed all day. What's poppin'? It's uh -huh. late in the day, and I'm feeling a little drained. I'm not gonna be the hype rabbit y'all usually seeing. I mean, but I'm gonna give y'all give what y'all want. You feel me? Yeah. Still here. I'm still getting killed forever. Never, never like Okay. So, uh, I mean, I see you got some you got some new stuff coming out. I mean, what, what's it called, and when's it coming out? Uh, right now, I got a little warm up joint. I'm doing like a um, a little mini series, like warm up CDs, and they're warming up to the main joint. They warming up to my main uh, mix CD called Purple Rain. Like I got the joint out right now. I'm giving it out free on the internet. It's called Tommy Sauce for President. The next joint gonna be called Heartthrob, I believe, and then a joint after that, like to be announced and shit. But like they like warm ups to the main. Mix CD or whatever, you know what I mean, the main shit called Purple Rain, got a lot of motherfuckers on there, like, I'm not talking about no local niggas, I'm talking about, like, some major names that make it, like, y'all see on TV every day and everything, you know what I mean? Okay, so it's about to be real official and big for you, no know, nine. Yeah, that's all I got, probably in the 08 and shit, you know what I mean, I got a little, uh, business problem, you know what I mean, a little shit that gotta be taken care of legally and everything. I mean, so when that's resolved and when that's settled and everything, like, y'all gonna see a whole bunch of my face. The hate level is gonna go, like, through the fucking roof. And it's, it's, it's probably, I might probably have to go cop up another vest, you know what I mean? So hit up my man Boogie and shit, you know. You get them for cheap and everything, but it is what it is. Alright, so everybody who ain't, you know, familiar with your sound, like, how, how do you describe your music? Uh, shit. I, I describe that shit as starstruck, man. That's my new shit. I used to call it dancing and everything. I used to call my flow dancing, my style dancing and everything. But yeah, I mean, the past is the past. I let that go, reinventing myself and shit. I'm coming with the new shit, so I call my shit like the stars. I don't fucking know what the name of it is. I let other niggas like make a fucking category for it. But it's like a mixture of R and B. I mean, pop and rap. I mean, I, I grab all audiences with my shit. You feel me? Yeah. So you kind of basically you a lot you real versatile. Mm -hmm. So, like if other artists you know like trying to basically other artists trying to get their stuff up to par. I mean, what would you tell them to, so they could get you know get on the same level as you are? They not gonna get on the same level as me. Like I, I ain't saying that shit to be cocky and that, like I'm being dead serious. They not gonna get on the same level as me, and I'm gonna tell you why. Half of these niggas out here is afraid to be themselves. No, matter of fact, I'm gonna take that back. 92% of these niggas out here that rap or period in general in the streets is not being themselves. They got this a mask on that they put on in the morning. They put on this fake persona. They walk out in the house. They walk out of the house or whatever, and they just pretending to be tough and shit, or they pretending to be something that they not. I mean, so me. Every time you hear me, every time you see me, I'm is 100% me. Like real shit is me. I'm the same way around the niggas in the street that I'm around my family. I mean, I. You know you gotta act a certain way around your family, you act a certain way around street niggas. But at the end of the day, I'm myself, you know what I mean? But they're not gonna be on my level because they're afraid to be me, you feel me? So, I mean, they're afraid to be themselves. And that's the problem with niggas. That's why niggas ain't making real music no more because everybody's like in this fucking box. You feel me? Let's pop and knuckles. Alright. Alright. We back. So. When it comes to uh, you know, when how you got started in rap, like is there anybody is there anybody that, you know, got you started, was responsible for it? As far as me me rapping or my influences, like what you mean? Well, getting you started. Well, as far as getting me started, I was always like on my grind shit with this music. Real tough. Um, I started my shit on myself on this shit. Like basically, I used to have my little radio in the living room. I would get on the little radio and shit, my karaoke machine, I made demos on tapes and shit, cassette tapes. And I would go out to the store and like buy 50 packs of tapes and shit. And I would like copy them, copy them, copy them, copy them. Yeah, I mean, you remember on tapes, the more you copy, the fucked up, more fucked up the quality is. So like, 
I would actually like make these tapes over and over and over and over and I would draw like the covers on pieces of paper and shit and like fold it and put it in each one of these cassette jars and I was doing like no bullshit like at least 100 to 200 like every one two days I was on some heavy shit so I like started promoting my shit like that then like when the CD shit started popping the most that's when I was a young young boy like, I was young as shit doing that shit then like I moved into the CDs and shit I started burning my own CDs I had one disc CD burner and shit like this before the multi joints came out. This is like when CDs started hitting the scene and shit. And the shit used to take like the length of the CD to burn and shit or some shit like that. So I'd be in that motherfucker like put a CD on, go do some shit, come back, to another joint, and like maybe a fucking half an hour later, like the shit was taking long and shit to burn. But um, I went out, got a couple copies like that, burned a couple joints, put them out. Like I was always on my soft grind. Then I niggas started noticing. I mean, shouts out to Jim and shit. Um, he helped me nick numbers and shit. Those were like the first niggas that actually put money behind me. I mean, uh, North and shit. Y'all might know North by Jim and shit. I mean, Jim by North. North and Nick Numbers, they helped me and shit. Then it went to a situation like I started fucking with me, um, QP, McQ, you know what I mean, uh, Wild Child Records and shit. It was out West Philly. Plus uh, was after that. Man, it was a shitload of niggas. I was fucking with this old management company that I just formally stopped messing with this shit. Like, they didn't really help me as far as getting promoted. I mean, I can't even mention them because they really didn't help me with shit. I, fuck it. And now, like, I'm fucking with, like, not on a disabled shit, but I can't think of nothing. And they did, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, Kay Perry, it was fucking with her, some chick, some girl named, uh, uh, Kay Perry and shit. She helped me. Um,. And now I'm like fucking with uh, Big Mike and shit. Everybody know Big Mike and shit. So like I, he, he like the clue of our time and shit. I mean, how'd you get connected with Big Mike? Well, I had did a uh, a song with Bully from Up D Block and shit. You know what I mean, a song called I Love Me and shit. I love me, you know me, you me, me. Where I go? So yeah, I mean that shit started circling, circulating around Yonkers and shit. That shit like was a big thing up there or whatever. It was on Bully mixtape. So it caught the attention of um, DJ Big Mike and shit. You know what I mean, he said he was looking for me. Niggas was like, yo, he looking for you, he looking for you. Okay, so I got the call one night from DJ Young Legend and shit. Like, yo, Big Mike wanna holla at you. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm thinking of, like the Cassidy situation when niggas came down to Philly, like, yo, where the bull Cassidy? So he like hit me up, he like, yeah, I've been looking for you for a while, you know what I mean? I fucks with you, I like the sound and everything, so like that was that. It took me at Yonkers and shit. I mean, because I had already did some hooks for the D-Block compilation album, you know what I mean? So I did them hooks or whatever, and I stopped fucking with my old management or whatever, you know what I mean? Because, like, the business part of things were hooked up, right? So as a, as a, you know I mean, off, knock off to that, I goes back up D-Block, they still had the songs and shit, and word around town, they were still looking for me and shit to do some more hooks for niggas. So I did the hooks and shit. Yeah, I mean, I messed the house pit and shit. He was like, he fucking with my shit. So, like, as of now, I put a couple drums on the D-Block album. And I'm starting to fuck with the house pit on his shit. So, I mean, like, everything's a blessing. But that's how it should happen. Like, Mike, he had me a lot of places. Like, a lot of places on a lot of shit with a lot of people. I mean, so Mike is on his job. I mean, and Mike is helping me right now. It's basically my management, my unofficial management. I mean, that is what that is right there. Okay. All right. On to something else. Can you tell us like a memorable story, like you know when it, what it is when it comes to mixtapes, like your first mixtape when you was growing up. You know, besides you know like how you just came up with your uh, you making your own tapes, like yeah. like what mixtape influenced you when you was coming up? Damn. Uh, Clue. It was this Clue John. I can't remember what this shit was called. Yo, fuck. Clue for president or some shit. I do not. I don't know how I can't remember this shit, but that shit and DMX vs. Cannabis, those was my first two mixtapes that I was like banging, banging. I don't even remember if it was a tape or a fucking CD, but I was like playing the motherfuckers like, like I like it was the last fucking thing on earth. Like this shit was water. Yeah, you know I mean, I had this shit everywhere. I had this shit in my Walkman and shit, like over, you know, just flipping over, winding and shit. Like I had this shit banging. Like them two CDs and Best of Me's. And Best of Bad Boy, those were my shits. Like, I had Best of Bad Boy and Best of Mace. Like, you couldn't tell me shit back then, you know what I mean? 
That was like my favorite, my, my first couple mixtapes and shit.